thank you very much for your attention and uh i will get doug back the screen <laughs> i am here <laughs> dr gutman thank you so much once again that was an absolutely fascinating presentation and uh just in a no we ended up with over 200 lines joining us and many of them had several people on the line so it's great that this word is being spread um i know you're going to have time for a few questions <clears throat> one one question i got uh, right off the bat it's just something, but you usually cover your presentation, and I just think it's just a request from a couple of other people. Could you touch briefly on the difference? We know there's a lot of pretenders to the throne out there. There's like magical mouthwash, and there's tablets available in the pharmaceutical industry and things like that that are supposedly going to raise a glutathione. I just thought it would be great if you just took a minute and kind of addressed the competitors that we have or the, they think they're competitors out there well um they say that imitation is uh, one of the greatest forms of flattery and uh since we started having uh success uh with immunical i mean it's it's been over 25 years uh, there have been a lot of knockoffs a lot of knockoffs and there have been all sorts of substances um that supposedly raise glutathione levels uh, in human beings. But when you you look at these and you look for the research, uh, you look for human trials, they're just not there. Uh, the, the, the only other uh, glutathione precursor that's in popular use that works, uh, it's, it's used in the medical community, is NAC or N-acetylcysteine which is a very effective way of raising glutathione, except it has some problems. It's, it's got some major side effects. Uh, you, you can't use it for, for more than extended periods of time. And it has what's called a short half-life. Uh, it only hangs around for two to four hours. So you have to take it multiple times during the day for it to work. But these other things, uh, liposomal glutathione and all kinds of fancy glutathione, you, you can't eat glutathione eating glutathione just will not raise the glutathione levels in your cells uh, glutathione is made by the cell so to raise glutathione levels you need to give your cell the, the building blocks the specific nutrition for the cells to make glutathione what we call glutathione precursors and that's what immunocal is there's just no secret we could draw it out um, molecule by molecule, immunocal is a glutathione precursor. And when you look up immunocal in the Canadian CPS or the American PDR, uh, these are reference books that sit on the desk of every single doctor and every single pharmacist in North America. You'll find immunocal there. Although this book lists the pharmaceuticals, you'll find immunocal there. And immunocal is defined as a glutathione precursor so these these other substances um you could read their marketing uh, uh you could maybe even find some fake studies but you need to go to a place like pubmed.gov where original studies are found you you won't find anything you won't find any well done double blind placebo controlled studies in humans and that's the only thing that a responsible health professional will use to recommend the product to a patient so if i could summarize that just tell me whether we're on the right track or, would it be fair to say that immunocall is the only scientifically proven and clinically validated uh, natural way to raise intracellular glutathione. Would that be a fair statement? Um, th that would be a fair statement. It's the only commercial product, yeah. There there are some uh, research things going on in small studies uh, that maybe show some promise, but uh, there where Immunical was 25 years ago, I mean, we're going to be seeing something in the future, but as it stands, you're pretty much right, Doug. Right. Excellent. So another question that crops up all the time is all around dosage. Like, 
is one enough? Is two enough? How old should you be? What if you diagnose, say, with a with a uh, Alzheimer's or a neurodegenerative disease? Should you increase your dosage? Could you speak to that for a minute? Um, the answer is yes. Uh, you should increase your dose as you age. But just to to cover the topic entirely, uh, let's start with pediatrics. Uh, we've had lots of experience with uh, with children. Um, the dose is point five grams per kilo. Okay. So just jot that down um, and uh, you'll be able to calculate what, what a little guy needs. Um, the maintenance dose for a young, healthy person is about one package a day. Uh, young, uh, that's defined medically as under 45. And healthy, well, that defines itself. Um, if you're a young person uh, uh, with asthma, for example, you, you'll want to be taking more. If you're a young person that feels like they're going to be sick the next day from a viral disease, clearly you should be uh, taking more. In our studies with really uh, compromised uh, patients, uh, cancer patients, uh, AIDS patients, um, they were taking... Um, 30 or 40 grams a day, which is three or four pouches a day uh, in, in our studies. There are a lot of people that will take even more depending on their condition. Um, uh, I've seen people with chronic fatigue syndrome say they feel better at six pouches than at five, uh, but th this is rather unusual. Uh, but if you're, if, you're, if you're really compromised, you should be taking three or four a day. Uh, everybody else well, like myself, I'm not young, but uh, I'm healthy. I'll take at least two packages a day. Unless, of course, I feel like I'm coming down with something and, and I'll increase it to, to three or four. Athletes need to take more. The protein demands are greater in athletes. And oxidative stress is greater in athletes because they're using more oxygen. Uh, I know John Molson uh, our research ambassador is, he works out three times a day. Uh, he, he takes three or four pouches of immunocal a day. And, and certainly uh, a lot of the upper echelon athletes that we, we work with take more. Right. Uh, great answer. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I've got a bunch of questions popping up here. Uh, one of them is, um, is the detox component of immunocal, will it help you get rid of all the toxins and any harmful chemicals? that could be in the cells such as heavy metals and some of the stuff that came, some of the negative aspects of the uh, COVID vaccine is what the question is actually directed at. Will it help with that? Um, well, let, let's talk about toxins um, and heavy metals. Absolutely. I mean, there's a, a huge list of substances. I don't think the list is complete. It's hundreds, if not thousands of, of uh, things that we run into from the air that we breathe, the food that we eat, the water that we drink, the drugs that we take. Um, uh, thousands of these are detoxified by uh, glutathione. Um, I'm going to avoid the vaccination question for political reasons. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good idea to be uh, politically neutral. Um, <clears throat> here's a good well, question. Also, I it's just... Go ahead. See, it, it, it also, as, as a physician, you want to keep those those uh, um, positions to yourself. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. Um, now, I don't know about this one. I'm sure maybe you know, myoclonic seizures. Would raising glutathione help with my, myoclonic seizures? And apparently the, the person getting is just a young four-year-old boy. That's Yes. Uh, yes. And, and, uh, it helps with a lot of seizures, a lot of uh, seizure disorders. And uh, um, I, I have written an entire chapter on seizures, and maybe somebody might want, want to get them a, a copy of that that chapter. Uh, I, I'm interesting. I don't know what it has to do with aging, but I'm glad to be able to answer that question. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, can GSH levels be measured by blood tests? Yes and no. Um, can you find a decent blood test to measure glutathione levels? It's very hard to do that. 
Uh, you could, I mean, I'm sorry, you can find tests that say that they measure glutathione levels but you don't really know what you're getting and the vast majority of these tests for 30 or 40 dollars are highly inaccurate i wouldn't count on them uh in our research studies and in other research studies they use a very sophisticated uh means of, of measuring glutathione and it, it may cost a couple hundred bucks but i will say this um, given the ingenuity of, of uh, uh, business people and scientists, uh, especially in the United States, uh, one day we will have a inexpensive and effective way of measuring glutathione. And at that point, uh, doctors will be giving you this test uh, every every annual visit, the same way as they measure your glucose or or cholesterol. They will be measuring. Uh, glutathione levels. This this will come. But right now, I don't really trust the tests that you find online. Hmm. Interesting. Um, Tom Oldershaw asked if this presentation will be available on on your website. Be a good time to just kind of talk a little bit about the what you do offer those of us who would like to follow you and and yeah your, uh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Thank, let me just share my um, screen for a second. Um, here we go. Yeah, so um, thanks, Tom, for asking. Um, I, I I do have a Facebook page, and there are uh, new research articles on glutathione um, posted all the time. Um, there's also a YouTube channel uh, where I have uh, all of these webinars um, posted shortly after uh, they're recorded. Uh, so you could find this one uh, in a few days, as well as previous ones, um, and as well as a whole bunch of other videos on Immunical and glutathione. And the, the other three uh, websites that you see there, um, those are um, places where you could uh, purchase my my books uh, amazon is is uh, is easily accessible but those other two websites you might find them a little bit cheaper yeah excellent <clears throat> thank you um so uh barry asked about the timing on the mci published the yeah <laughs> barry barry uh dr dr white is a, a a glutton for research and and science and uh um he 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 loves he loves the science um, Barry, I, I'm hoping in the next few months, um, things are still a little bit slow, uh, e even with COVID, uh, we're actually having, um, a bit of a COVID outbreak, uh, here in, in Montreal, uh, the hospitals are starting to see more patients, but, um, hopefully in a few months, as soon as it comes out, I promise y'all, uh, I'll make a big announcement. Awesome. Here's a kind of a, a specific request from one of our members, Dorothy. Uh, they have a family member that's hospitalized and placed on a feeder for nutritional uh, benefit. So is there a, a suggestion about how they can, would it be beneficial to try and get immunocall into the feeder too? Oh, many people have done that. Uh, just uh, be sure to discuss this thoroughly with both the doctor and the nutritional team. Um, if, uh, uh, if the, the team needs information on glutathione, uh, it's easily available in, in the PDR if you're here in the States or in the CPS here in Canada. Um, the, the only, the only uh, warning that I give you is that make sure it's really well mixed uh, before you put it into uh, a feeding tube. It needs to be really, really well mixed. But no, this, um, this is not uncommon. Okay. Uh, Wayne asks, Dr. Gutman, could you please speak to the benefit of immunocall for persons suffering from bronchial tasis and other chronic lung disease? Uh, uh, bronchiectasis. Um, yeah, uh, bronchiectasis. No. Yeah, uh, that is a, a condition that's uh, the result of infections and um um, broadening of the, the bronchial tube so that pus accumulates. 
Um, clearly, uh, there is uh, great help to be uh, potentially derived from raising glutathione, um, both on uh, an immune system level, because we are dealing with uh, recurrent infections, <clears throat> and uh, on a pulmonary level. And uh, we've uh, personally, uh, the company has done studies on on chronic bronchitis, uh, on COPD, um, on on asthma. Um, we've written on um, cystic fibrosis. Uh, we've uh, written on pulmonary fibrosis. So, uh, the Im important question: um, the role of glutathione cannot be understated in lung issues or pulmonary disease. It, it plays a huge, huge role. Excellent. <clears throat> okay, um, Judy asks like. Two packs a day is the maintenance dosage. We kind of get that. But if you're losing glutathione naturally, as you age, at some point, should you consider about going maybe to three packs, even though you're not sick, feel healthy? Like, or like at what point can we just no longer replenish the glutathione levels by increasing the dosage as we age sort of thing? I, I appreciate what, what Judy is saying. And um, uh, maybe I need to clarify something. Uh, yes, three or four pouches is what we used in really sick people, but that's not to say that an older people who, uh, an older person who's feeling well couldn't take three pouches a day. Clearly they can. And um, older people lose their ability to manufacture glutathione. So the, the, the machine needs to be primed. So if if you have the resources to take three pouches a day, Oh, please do. Judy, thank you for, for clarifying that. Yeah, <clears throat> that's, a, that's a good uh, good question. Um, Genesee uh, is asking a question specifically for his son. Uh, he was 33, healthy, and then uh, collapsed on the tennis court. And she's just started him on platinum and immunocol and just didn't know if there was any other recommendations. Um, I, should, the, I should note... He has seen seven doctors, and they can't find anything wrong with him. But he's just still not feeling. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I said I, it would be hard for me to make any recommend other recommendations without knowing uh, what the pathology was. But I guess uh, they can't find the pathology. Um, so uh, clearly, uh, one base that you want to have covered is his uh, is his nutrition, and. The platinum is the first place I would start, um, but of course there there are other products to be considered. Um, a good omega product, uh, uh, CoQ10, um, uh, curcumin, uh, a good multivitamin, um, a good probiotic. Uh, these are all important. Uh, these are all important, especially if you don't know what's going on. You want to cover all your bases. Right. Good advice. Um, so. Insulin and diabetes. Can we talk about that just for a second? I got a question here on that. So, um, you know what? We 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 might be able to do diabetes in another call. Um, but I will say this: um, taking glutathione, raising glutathione by using Immunocal, um, we're not. Our objective is not really to uh, lower blood sugar. Uh, sometimes it does. Uh, many times it doesn't. Uh, our objective is to protect the diabetic from the long-term consequences of their disease. And the long-term consequences of their disease are, number one, um, their immune system. Diabetics are, by definition, immunocompromised. Um, they get more skin infections, toe infections, lung infections. So if you can help the immune system along there, you can avoid some of the infectious complications. But the, the major... Uh, cause of morbidity and mortality in a diabetic is their their um, their cardiovascular system. Uh, diabetics are at a much higher risk for the development of stroke and 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 heart attack. That's their large vessels. When you look at their small vessels, uh, diabetic blindness is a, a compromised uh, 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 vessels to the retina. Uh, diabetic uh, uh, kidney failure. 
um, renal failure. It's because of the circulation to their kidneys. Um, diabetic neuropathy is because of circulation to their nerves. So what's going on here? Diabetics have a much higher internal environment, a much higher oxidative stress. And this oxidative stress oxidizes certain fats, the most notorious of which are things like cholesterol. And when you oxidize these fats, biochemically, they become stickier and they gum up your arteries and they impair your blood flow. So you're more prone to diabetic blindness. You're more prone to having a heart attack. Well, here's the thing. The major substance produced by your body to slow down the oxidation of these fats, to slow down lipid um, peroxidation is a molecule called glutathione peroxide. If you raise your glutathione levels, you raise your glutathione peroxidase, uh, your, your glutathione peroxidase levels, and you're able to slow down the development of plaque, and in an ideal circumstance, even reduce it. So um, for diabetics, um, th this is just so important to understand. I think right. I... <coughs> I think we'll call it a night. <laughs> I was just going to say that. I, mean, I, agree. I was going to, uh, to everybody who we didn't get to your questions, get a lot of questions about specific individual health challenges. And the thing you got to remember is that Immunicol is a, is a food for the immune system. It's a natural, healthy food, and it is going to strengthen the immune system. So the question almost is, you need to ask yourself, would this situation improve if the person in question had a stronger immune system? And it, invariably the answer is yes. So when you're hung up on would this help with this specific disease or this particular case, you just need to remember you're strengthening their immune system. You're making them stronger, healthier, you know, and all the other benefits come with their products. So the answer is always invariably yes. There's a couple of specific situations like, you know, organ transplants and people that have a specific uh, allergy to you know, milk, but that's, they know if they have that to milk protein. So not lactose intolerance, but to milk proteins. So in very few cases, does it not benefit the person? So, I mean, often and it's difficult to answer every single question. And some of these, I can't, not being a medical guy, I can't even pronounce half of them. But I do know that if you add immunocol to the diet of the person in question, you're going to see some benefits invariably. So that's, just to answer, kind of throw a blanket, answer all those questions. Dr. Govan, I love the idea of doing diabetes. That's a very common thing as people get older and uh, a great concern to many, many people. So that would be a great chat to have. All right. So that, I would like to thank you so much again, Dr. Gutman. You are truly a gift to our uh, Immunitech family and uh, wisdom and that your willingness to share it with us and stay up late at night to, to give us this information is is greatly respected from all of us. So thank you, Doug. Um, you're, a, you're a great host. A pleasure <laughs> to work with. Thank you. Well, hey, 200 plus people next month. Let's spread the word. We'll do another one in early uh, early October, and uh, we'll get. Uh, let's go for 250 lines in. That'd be great. Okay. <laughs> Thanks everyone for attending tonight. Take care. We appreciate it very much. Have a wonderful evening, Dylan. Cue the music. <laughs> Good night, Dr. Good night, Dr.